It's Lisa and welcome to a new reading vlog. So I'm going to be vlogging this week. We have some exciting things happening, some exciting adaptations happening this week. So Daisy Jones all throughout the month of March has been being released. We have a couple more episodes happening this Thursday, but also on Thursday, Thursday is going to be a big day. <laughs> we have season two of Shadow and Bone coming out and I'm really excited. I've actually been doing a rewatch of season one and that is making me a lot more excited for season two. I honestly like before this rewatch was feeling very like I was excited excited for it, but honestly I wasn't like as excited as I was for season one. I don't know if it's just me and like my timeline and what I'm seeing online, but I just feel like there is significantly less hype and discussion surrounding season two as there was with season one. I feel like I couldn't go online without seeing something about the Shadow and Bone TV show when season one was about to be released. And I just feel like that's not the same with season two. I feel like people are talking about it and I'm sure there are people who are hyping it up. Like it's probably just my timeline maybe that I'm not seeing it a lot, but I just feel like I'm not seeing as much hype for season two. But it is coming out this Thursday, so I imagine like throughout the week this week I'll start seeing more and more about it. But I'm so excited to see Wylan. I'm so excited for his character to be introduced. I'm so excited to see him interact with the other crows and the other characters. And he's just like one of my favorite characters. Him and Inej I think are my favorite crows. I just love him. I think he's so precious and I'm so excited to see him in season two. Also one of my favorite characters, like the only character from the original Grisha trilogy that I even liked, I think. He was one of the few characters, was Nikolai. And he's getting introduced in season two. And I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> I'm not super pumped about it. Um, I don't mean to be like mean or like rude to the actor, um, but I'm just not getting Nikolai vibes from him. Uh, there was a scene, like a snippet that they posted of Nikolai, Mal, and Alina, a little teaser, and I just, I'm just not getting Nikolai from him. And I mean, that was only one scene, so we'll see how it goes the rest of the season. But yeah, I don't know. I'm just not, I'm not sure how I feel about the Nikolai that was cast. I think the actor himself even said that he was having trouble like connecting with the character, so that makes it sound promising, doesn't it? <laughs> I think that's like part of the reason why I haven't been super excited for season two is because one of my favorite characters is being introduced, but I'm just like, I'm not super happy with what we've seen so far. Again, I'm not trying to be mean, but um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But at least we will have Wylan, so you know, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> I just feel like Nikolai stands. We keep losing. We get a Nikolai duology that is not about Nikolai and is also bad. And now this, but it's fine. Maybe, maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised. <laughs> but also hopefully we'll be able to do some reading this week. We'll see. I mean, there's going to be a lot of um, TV watching this week between Daisy Jones and Shadow and Bone seasons one and two, but I do want to do some reading. I did just get my hold in on the Davenport. So this is by Crystal Marquis. I haven't started reading this book yet, so I don't fully know what it's going to be about, but I do know you're following the Davenport family. And this has been kind of compared to Bridgerton. It's like a historical romance type of book. You're following all of the like siblings and kids in the Davenport family and their relationships and the angst and the drama and all of that. I think it's going to be a really fun time. I'm hopeful that I will like this more than I liked The Duke and I, which is the first Bridgerton book. <laughs> I do like the Bridgerton show though, so hopefully this book kind of has a more similar vibes of the show. I don't know. I'm really excited. I've heard really good things about it, so I'm going to be reading that throughout the week, but I also have kind of been in a fantasy mood. I feel like I'm slowly getting back into fantasy, which is very exciting, but I was kind of trying to think of what I wanted to pick up next that's fantasy, and I was looking at my physical TBR because I said at the beginning of the month, at the beginning of March, I wanted to read more off of my physical TBR, and we haven't done that yet. The three things I've read in March so far have all been through my library or Kindle Unlimited, so we gotta fix that. So what I'm thinking is I was in the kind of the mood to revisit 
Pryor's War by Nina Varela. This is the first book in the duology and I have Ironheart on my TBR. But I read Cryer's War back in 2020 and I definitely need to reread before I get into Ironheart. So I think this week I might try and reread Cryer's War and maybe start Ironheart, maybe finish it. I don't know. I do have access to the audiobooks for both of them. So I think that will make me or it'll help me get through them a little bit faster, especially Cryer's War where it's a reread. I kind of want to get through it a little bit quicker just so I can get to the new book in the series that I haven't read yet. And then I'll be reading something off my physical TBR and I'll be finishing a series, which are both goals for me. So that would be really good if I could do that. But yeah, that was kind of what I felt drawn to picking up soon. So I might pick up Cryer's War as well and maybe read Cryer's War along with the Davenports and just kind of switch back and forth depending on what I'm in the mood for. So that might be happening this week. But yeah, I thought it'd be fun to document what I read this week, what I get up to, along with Shadow and Bone, and Daisy Jones and the Six. I think we're getting a pretty significant snowstorm tomorrow. I think it's starting tonight into tomorrow and into Wednesday. So it'll be a nice cozy day tomorrow. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it'd be a fun week to vlog and we'll just see what we get up to, what we end up reading. But yes, hello and welcome to a new vlog. <laughs> everyone. Happy uh, Shadow and Bone season two eve. <laughs> I did in fact finish my rewatch of season one yesterday and now that I've done that rewatch I'm feeling so much more excited for season two. I forgot how much I enjoyed season one and how like especially the Shadow and Bone storyline and those characters it made me actually care about them and like that storyline. So I'm just really excited to see what they do in season two. I'm really hoping I continue to love Alina and Mal as well in season two because they're definitely getting into Siege and Storm 100%. And then I think they're also getting into Ruin and Rising a little bit in season two. I don't know if they're doing the whole book. I don't really know what's going to end up happening, but I know Siege and Storm, that storyline is happening and Mal is so annoying in Siege and Storm. So I'm just hoping that I continue to like these characters a lot more in the show than I do in the books and I'm just excited for season two. I'm excited to see what happens. So excited for Wylan. Still unsure about Nikolai, but definitely just feeling more pumped about season two after that rewatch. But yeah, because of both Shadow and Bone season two, and we have a couple more Daisy Jones episodes coming out tomorrow, I don't know how much reading is actually going to be happening like over the next few days, over the weekend, because I have a feeling it's going to be a weekend full of watching the television and watching season two of Shadow and Bone. So we'll see. But I did want to update on what I am currently reading, and I hope that I can finish both of them by the end of this vlog, but like I said, we'll see. So I did start reading The Davenports by Crystal Marquis. I'm on chapter 10, which is 19% of the way through, so I'm not super far, but I feel like I can kind of give you an idea of what this book is about. So in this book, you're following the Davenport family, specifically the daughters and their friends. We have Olivia, who is the oldest sister, and Helen, and then we have Ruby, who is one of their friends and is also like a part of a very well-off family, and then we have Amy Rose, who is one of their friends and has now turned into one of their mates. And Olivia specifically is looking to find a match, find a husband, and she meets this guy who seems really great, but then she also meets this other guy and she kind of challenges her like ideas and her beliefs and her lifestyle, and I think she's going to maybe be more interested in him, even though she should be interested in the other guy. And then we have Helen, who is the younger sister, and she 
is definitely more interested in like fixing cars and being a part of her family's company, her dad's company. But then I think she ends up, I haven't really gotten this far into the book yet, but I think she ends up kind of developing feelings for her sister's suitor. And then we have Ruby, whose family is friends with the Davenports. They seem to be another like well-off successful family, but they're actually like behind the scenes struggling financially. So they're trying to have Ruby make a match and be married to John Davenport. And then I think she ends up falling for somebody else and that causes a whole mess. I haven't gone that far either, but it's in the description of the book. <laughs> and then we have Amy Rose, who is actually interested in John and wants to marry him, even though she probably can't. And she's also trying to open her own business, her own salon. There's a lot of romantic relationships and things crossing over and people being interested in someone that they shouldn't. So it just seems like it's going to be messy and fun and dramatic. And I'm excited to keep going with this. I'm, like I said, not too far. So things that are even in the description about these characters, like I haven't even gotten to that point yet but I'm excited to keep going with it and see everything that happens. I think it's going to be, like I said, very fun and there's just going to be a lot of drama and I'm very excited about it. And we are getting all of these four girls' perspectives. So you're kind of jumping chapter to chapter between the different perspectives between them. And I feel like it could have been very confusing at first getting introduced to four different characters, but I do feel like the author has done a good job of making all of these characters very distinct. I feel like they have very distinct personalities and voices, so it's kind of easy to follow along and know whose perspective we're in. So yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. I think it's going to be a fun time. We'll see how I feel about it in the end because I'm not super far into it, but so far I am enjoying it. And then I did end up starting a reread of Crier's War by Nina Varela. I'm on chapter 12, which is page 203. So I'm already like halfway through and I feel like it's going quickly because I do have the audiobook. You're following Crier and Ayla. They are the kind of main characters and years before you're even really like they even exist, there was a queen who was unable to get pregnant. So she wanted someone to be able to make her a child and someone was successful they made her a child and it was kind of the first Automa. So the Automai are these creations, these human-like things. They get their energy from this thing called a heartstone and that is like what kind of powers them. They're not quite human, but almost, but they are like created. So we have Cryer now years later, who is the daughter of the king of a part of the land and she is an Automai. And the Automai in this world are kind of now the ones in charge. They are all kind of ruling over the humans. So the roles have kind of reversed. We also have Ayla who is a human and she is kind of a servant to the king. She kind of works for them and she wants to get revenge on him because he is responsible for killing her entire family. So her kind of plan for revenge is killing Cryer. And then it doesn't really say this in the description, so I won't say too, too much, but Ayla somehow ends up getting an opportunity to be more inside the castle, inside the palace and be around these rulers and be around Cryer. So she kind of thinks that's going to be her opportunity to get her revenge. But as she learns more about the world and the politics and also about Cryer and gets closer to her, she starts to question her path of revenge. And I don't know, I just really like this book. I gave it five stars the first time I read it. Don't know if it's going to be five stars on this reread. We will see. I feel like I don't really remember a whole lot of what happens in this book. And so it's been fun to revisit it. But yeah, so far I am enjoying this reread. I feel like this book and this series just has a lot of my buzzwords, things I enjoy in books. We have, you know, royalty. We have court and political intrigue. We even have a bit of a hidden identity thing with Ayla, who is, you know, trying to get this revenge. She's trying to hide the fact that she wants this revenge while still being very close to Cryer. So yeah, also it's sapphic. So like all great things. <laughs> I don't know. I just think it's a very interesting world, a very interesting concept, and I really do like the characters. I'm excited to finally like finish this and then get into Ironheart, which I have not read, and then I will also be finishing another series because we all know I've started too many series. So excited to finish this up, get into Ironheart, but yeah, I'm really enjoying this reread so far. I don't know, just, just an interesting world, a forbidden romance, and great characters, political intrigue, just so many things that I enjoy reading about. So excited to finish this up. I'm hoping maybe that I could finish it tonight. We'll see. I still have like over 200 pages left to read of this book, but it could happen. I think with the audiobook, it could help me get through it faster and then I can finish this before Shadow and Bone season two and also more Daisy Jones episodes lockdown that begins. <laughs> but yeah, I'm like halfway through this. So I'm hoping I can finish this maybe tonight and then continue on with the Davenports as well. And hopefully maybe finish these before the end of the vlog. But like I said, Shadow and Bone season two, Daisy Jones and the Six. They're going to be distracting me, I think. <laughs> I also think I might have some exciting mail being delivered 
at some point this week, Darian said she sent me something. I know something has been delivered at our mailbox, but I once again don't have the mailbox key. My mother does and she is not home. So I might need to text her to stop at the mailbox. <laughs> okay, my camera did die and interrupted what I was saying. But basically, I think we're gonna have some fun book unboxings coming up hopefully at some point in this vlog. But yeah, I think that, that that's really everything I wanted to say. My camera really died at a very inconvenient time. <laughs> but yeah, I'm planning on doing a lot of reading tonight so that I can get as far into my books as possible before Shadow and Bone completely takes over. But we will be back and I will be documenting all of my thoughts on Shadow and Bone when I start watching. I'm sure I will start watching it tomorrow and it'll just be a fun time to document all of my reactions and thoughts. So very excited for what is to come in the rest of this vlog. Hello and welcome to Unboxing Corner. <laughs> I have quite a few things, quite a few packages that arrived that I thought we could unbox together. One is one I talked about in the last update, a couple of things are just some extra things. Also the thing that Darian said that she sent me still hasn't arrived. So we'll unbox that once that arrives, but I do have some things here. And also before we get into that, happy Shadow and Bone season two day, everybody. <laughs> I haven't watched any of it yet. I'm sure that there are people who have already finished watching season two. I have yet to start, but I'm hoping that I can watch at least an episode today because we are doing the Lord of Shadows live show uh, tonight. So maybe once we do that, like maybe before and after that, I can watch a couple of episodes. I'm very excited to get started. I'm nervous, but excited. We have a couple of Daisy Jones episodes coming out tonight. We also, okay, there's a lot happening actually. Sabrina Carpenter is coming out with a couple of songs that are like, it's like an extended version of her emails I can't send album. There's gonna be four more songs that she's releasing. And I'm like, what is she doing? What are you doing to me? <laughs> And also, Taylor Swift, her Eras tour starts this weekend. So I'm very excited to see what the set list is going to be. I have no expectations. I have no idea what I would want. I don't understand how she's doing a tour with all of her albums. Like, I don't know how you make a set list for that. I don't think I can be disappointed in any way because there's no way she was going to sing all my favorite songs. But like, it's just going to be good. The only thing is she better sing August or I will leave. <laughs> Not really, but... I'm sorry, if she doesn't sing August, like, you know, what's the point? Anyways, let's get into these unboxings. Also, reading updates. I've read a little bit of Crier's War and the Davenports. I held them up in opposite order. The Davenports, I'm now 28% of the way through. I'm on chapter 14. It says I'm on page 104. So I think this will go quickly once I get more into it. I just, I felt like not really in the mood to read last night. So I wasn't really forcing it, which is why I didn't read a ton of Crier's War. I know I said yesterday that I could probably finish it yesterday. That didn't happen. <laughs> I'm now on chapter 16, page 280. So I think I have like 150 pages left of this. I am hopeful that I will finish both of these this weekend, but as I just listed, Shadow and Bone, Daisy Jones, Sabrina Carpenter, Taylor Swift, Iris Tor. There's going to be some things distracting me, but I'm going to still try. <laughs> okay, mail time. Let's, let's go from in my opinion, least exciting to most exciting. So let me not show my address. That would be great. I have a package from Ipsy. This is a monthly makeup subscription that at this point I need to cancel it because I, I don't really need makeup every month. I mean, they're always little like trial sizes. So it's nice to be able to try different things, but I just am not as into makeup as I was when I started the subscription. So I don't really need it anymore. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the theme is step into your power. This month's an all out celebration of women's empowerment. I actually, I really like the design. I might have to like cut that out somehow. Here's the bag. It's not my favorite, but I do like the little design on the, uh, the zipper. Let's breeze through this because I have stickers and I also have a book to unbox, which I think is more what people want to see. <laughs> so first up we have, ooh, a blush. Oh, that's pretty. It's like, just like a neutral, rosy peach. It looks more peachy in my phone camera. It looks more pink in real life. I don't know. Very pretty. I really like that. I think I'll wear that a lot. Then what is this? Hey honey, I've used things from this brand before and I do like it. The Makeup Splash Intense Hydrating Aqua Serum. We love hydration. I have been slacking in my skincare game so my skin is struggling. So that's probably good. I definitely need some extra hydration. What is this? Oh, I think it's a lip liner. I hate these little plastic things. They never open on the seam. Oh, spoke too soon. <laughs> okay, yes, this is definitely a lip liner. Also, 
Oh, she's doing the beauty guru thing. I don't think this camera, it's my phone. I don't think that really does anything. It's not focusing on, it doesn't want to focus on this. It wants to focus on my face, which is nice, but it's just like a rosy pink color. I think I will wear that also quite a bit. So far, this has been good. Sometimes I get things in this and I'm like, I will not use half of these things. Okay, we have a goat milk hand cream. Also have very dry hands, so hopefully that works well. And oh, okay. This is the best thing. This is the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel. What is happening? This was actually, this was a really good one. This is a good one to unbox. I've used this before and I really like it. Wow. And my brow gel right now is running out. Ipsy, they, they get it. This is like one of my favorite brands for like brow stuff that's just like more expensive. Wow, this was a good one. I love how I was just saying like, I need to cancel this. And now I'm like, do I? Do I cancel it? <laughs> All right, that was the Ipsy unboxing. Now we can get into my stickers. We'll do the pop pack first. I have the pop pack and the cute pack. Mad World. Oh, I think I saw this on their Instagram. Is this like a Alice in Wonderland theme? This is really cute. They keep giving me these like sticker books so it's basically like you can take the big stickers that they give you and stick them in here so then when you go to use them they're all just like in one place instead of having a bunch of loose stickers however they've given me one of these like every month for the past like couple of months so it's like how many of these do i need realistically but this is really cute i really like the design on this one this is a really cool sticker this is the like bigger sticker that they gave me a little record player with bats coming out of it that is one of the coolest stickers I've ever seen. <laughs> oh yeah, I think this is the Alice in Wonderland theme. So we have these ones, we have these ones. I'm just gonna go through. Oh, I like these. I like that you can like write something on them. Oh, these are pretty. These are just some basic roses. Oh, and then they do sometimes include these like little, they're not stickers. They're just kind of like pieces of paper, like to-do lists, which those are quite helpful. Some more cute stickers. I like the, is that like a little mushroom? I don't know. Anything with a mushroom I like. Oh, and then this is like kind of like the sticker book, like the design on the outside of the sticker book. So I really like those. And then are those cats? Oh my God, it's cats and mushrooms. Thanks so much. <laughs> so that was the pop pack. Now we have the cute one. Oh, oh my God, the theme is besties. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh my God, what this little stamp is so funny <laughs> and then there's these little notepads little memo pads so cute he's reading a book wow this is why i saved the cute one for last because i always like it more than the pop one what is what's what's happening there i don't know okay so there's these ones which i'm shaking for some reason so i'm sorry if they're like <laughs> i don't know what's happening <laughs> but those are really cute and then we have more of the little raccoon and there's a, a sticker of him reading that's so cute oh my god this one with the little frog and him singing it's not focusing oh, oh my god i keep looking and finding more cute things the little sleeping bag oh my god a little worm oh my god these are so cute just for this alone incredible well then what is what is, i don't know what animal this is is it a bear the ears are confusing me but it's very cute more books more a bookshelf anything bookish you know i'm gonna enjoy is that a bookmark? I think that's what this might be. We'll get there, we'll get there. More little raccoon friends. I'm not sure. Are those both raccoons? Unsure, but they're very cute. <laughs> oh my god, it is a bookmark. Oh my god, okay, hold on. Then we have some, they sometimes give you these really long stickers that are supposed to be used as washi tape. So this is kind of similar to the other sticker sheet with the little confusing animal. Is it a bear? I can't tell what it is. I think it might be a bear, but there's like cups of tea and books very cute and then a bookmark i've this <laughs> they've never given me a bookmark before there's never been a bookmark included this is genius and it's the cute confusing animal like look at the ears i don't understand what that is um but that's adorable and then there's more on the other side this makes this subscription worth it <laughs> Then there's another one of these sticker sheets where you can kind of write something down in the empty space. Those are really cute. The little, little hedgehog peeking over. And then some more raccoons. I, are they all raccoons? Is that not a bear? Is that a raccoon? I'm not sure. <laughs> but those are really cute too. Wow, that was a great one. I'm, the bookmark, I'm taking that out right now so I can put it with my other bookmarks and start using it. That is incredible. Sticky, include more bookmarks. Thanks so much. <laughs> okay, now the thing we've all been waiting for. That says fairy loot. We know what that is. <laughs> if I could get into the box, that'd be great. 
Oh, there we go. I was struggling so much. Oh no, not these things. <laughs> and they're all on top. I mean, it's good. It's protecting the books. However, what do I do with them? <laughs> I'm gonna try so hard not to get these everywhere. Oh, you can kind of see. Stunning. Oh, that was squeaky. <laughs> um, yeah, hi. Hey. Oh, I love this. Okay, so this is Cursed by Marissa Meyer. This is the second book in the Gilded duology. I do have, you can't, there it is. You can see the first one I have, which that was gifted to me by Darian. So I knew when they did one for Cursed, the second book, I was like, well, I have to get it to match, right? Oh, they kind of match the other one. I think it's just a different color. Yeah, the first one is gold and all of like the inside is kind of, I think it's like brown and gold and this is blue. I really, I actually, I really like the silver. I wasn't sure about it at first. Hello, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's just, it's, it's beautiful. I think, yeah, there's a ribbon bookmark if I can get to it. There she is. Um, yeah, absolutely stunning. I feel like I liked the gold more with the gilded one, but I still liked the silver, but seeing it in person, I like it so much more. Like, look at, look at, look at that. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know. The Merce Meyer shelf is getting out of hand. I I did order the Lunar Chronicle set that they did. So I'm thinking the Marissa Meyer shelf is going to have to become multiple shelves. I think I'm just going to end up having like a whole shelf dedicated to the Lunar Chronicles at this point, which you know what? I'm not mad about. Um, I have no idea where I'm going to put this, but it's stunning and I'm so happy that I have it. Wow. Okay. I'm obsessed with the silver. I really am so glad that I like it even more in person. Obviously, like I liked it. I wouldn't have bought it if I didn't like it, but the silver is just, I'm just obsessed. It also says cursed for eternity bound by love on the back. It's just so beautiful. I feel like Fairy Loot, they just, special. their special editions are just... So good. All right, those are the unboxings. I saved this for last because this was very exciting. I don't know where I'm gonna put it. I might just put it next to Gilded for now, like have it propped up next to it. I feel like I really need to reorganize my bookshelves. It's kind of one of those things where I'm running out of space, so things are just kind of shoved where they'll fit. It's kind of by genre, but also not really, so I don't really know what I'm gonna do, but I'm very happy to have this and to add it to the Marissa Meyer collection. And yeah, I wanted to just share those exciting unboxings and hopefully the next time we chat, I will be starting Shadow and Bone season two. I really want to watch at least one episode today because I'm very excited to start it. Y'all, I'm about to lose my mind. <laughs> Remember how I was just saying, wow, so many things happening. Shadow and Bone, Daisy Jones and the Six, Sabrina Carpenter music, Taylor Swift era's tour. Taylor Swift was like, yeah, that's not enough. I'm gonna release more songs tonight at midnight. What? <laughs> um, okay, so she's releasing the two Hunger Games soundtrack songs, like Taylor's version of those songs. So Eyes Open and Safe and Sound, which can't wait to sob. <laughs> so can't wait to sob over that. But then also if this was a movie, Taylor's version, and all of the girls you loved before, which I think might have been one of the lover tracks that got leaked. <laughs> Like, was that like a few weeks ago? There were a few tracks that were like unreleased songs from Lover that got leaked. And I think that was one of them. And now we're getting it. There are no words. I'm, listen, if I never read ever again, it's Taylor Swift's fault. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> when was the 
is it on Sony U8? Don't, don't, don't touch that specific tool. <laughs> oh, it's Oh. Hi. I wasn't expecting you. Do you want? Do not mind it. Need a Zenic. Can I get anyone some tea? <laughs> you were. I'm told you could free someone from the Hellgate. <gasps> someone I say as if he's anyone and in truth he's the love of my life. <laughs> not the love of my life. But look at them. <laughs> Barrel doesn't belong to kings. It belongs to bastards. <laughs> so true. Okay, hi. I want to give some, just some quick initial thoughts on season two. I've watched episode one and part of episode two. I paused to have dinner, but now I'm going to get back into it, I think. We're also no longer doing the Lord of Shadows live show tonight. So I think the rest of my night is going to be watching Shadow and Bone. I don't know how far I'll get, but I wanted to just give some quick thoughts. With episode one and halfway through episode two, there's been a lot of crows content which is interesting considering this is called shadow and bone and i feel like we're not really seeing a whole lot of alina and mal and the darkling like we are seeing them but i just feel like there's been a lot of crows content which i'm not mad about however i'm not sure how i'm feeling about it <laughs> they're like starting to get into like the six of crows storyline and there's just been some like reveals already that i'm confused about what's happening i saw someone on twitter because i keep going on twitter even though i shouldn't be because it keeps spoiling me for things but someone was saying like they think of especially like the six of crows storyline as basically like fan fiction of six of crows and i think that's how i'm gonna approach their storyline this season because I don't know I'm seeing a lot of mixed reviews of the season so far so we'll see I will say seeing the five of them together has made me quite emotional seeing Wylan just exist has made me so happy I literally cried when he came on the screen for the first time he is my everything I'm so happy <laughs> and the Shadow and Bone storyline it's I mean it's fine I am so surprised with how much I'm loving Mal and Alina because that was not how I felt in the books and I'm really hoping it stays that way because Mal gets really annoying in Siege and Storm so let's hope it stays that way but yeah I mean I don't know that storyline is going fine as well I'm interested to see how they do that are we gonna get into Ruin and Rising I'm just getting the vibe that this is like not getting renewed for a new season there's been talks of like a Six of Crows spinoff but like this needs to do well in order for that to happen but they're already doing things from Six of Crows in season two so I'm confused as to what's going on it's kind of a mess but like am I having a good time kind of <laughs> so we'll see how it goes I'm curious to see just how far into all of the books we get if this is going to kind of wrap up the Shadow and Bone storyline I really don't know at this point so we'll see but yeah I think I'm gonna get back into watching episode two I don't know how far I'll make it but I think me and Darian are gonna do a little zoom call and just chat and I'm gonna watch and we'll see how messy it gets <laughs> Today's St. Patrick's Day? Yeah, it's the 17th. It's St. Patrick's Day. What a day we're having. <laughs> what a way to celebrate. We have new Taylor Swift music, new Sabrina Carpenter music, uh, Jimin from BTS released a song. Like, I simply don't know how to lose. <laughs> so mainly I want to update on Shadow and Bone thoughts so far because I'm on episode five. I'm like 21 minutes into episode five because I started it while I was eating lunch, but I'm like about halfway through the show so far or the season. Right now, I... I'm liking it. I don't feel like I'm as obsessed with this season as I was with season one, but I'm liking it, which makes me concerned because I feel like a lot of people are pretty disappointed with it. And a lot of that disappointment is coming from like the second half of the show or the season, I mean, and like the last episode specifically. I feel like a lot of people are very upset about what happens in that last episode. So I'm a little concerned, but so far I'm having a good time. I don't think, like I said, I'm not loving it as much as season one, but I'm still enjoying it. I like that Mal isn't being annoying. I still like him, which is great because I was nervous that they were going to make him do everything that he did in Siege and Storm and they're not. 
so love that. I'm also loving Wylan just like in general, just like his existence. I feel like every time he comes on my screen, I want to cry and I have some of the times. <laughs> I'm also loving any scene between Wylan and Jesper. I know some people are kind of disappointed because some things are different from the books and I'm not as disappointed because I feel like someone made this point on Twitter that Netflix is very quick to cancel their shows and like if this doesn't get renewed, if we don't get a Six of Crows spinoff, which seems to be something that people are talking about, so I'm not really sure, but like if that doesn't happen we might not have gotten any scenes between Wylan and Jesper so it's good that they're kind of doing some things so we can actually see them together so love Wylan love Jesper love the both of them together also like Kaz Freddie Carter's like performance of Kaz this season is I think so much better than season one I didn't mind him in season one but there were moments where I was like oh yeah that's Kaz but there were a lot where I was like I don't know I wasn't completely buying it I wasn't completely on board however season two especially episodes three and four. That is the Cassiest Cas I have ever seen from Freddie Carter. <laughs> like, it's so good. Also, I'm loving the moments we see Jenya and David, which I feel like a lot of people maybe don't care as much about that as they do about some of the other characters in the show. But honestly, like, they're low-key becoming the highlight of this show for me or this season. <laughs> Jenya and David are some of my, like, favorite characters from the books, especially the original trilogy where there's not a whole lot of characters that I actually like from the Shadow and Bone trilogy. I like them. And I love them whenever we see them in any of the books and I'm loving seeing them in the show. I literally just watched the scene, the I know metal scene, which like is in the books too. It's so good. <laughs> Who knew that Jenya and David were going to be like my favorite ship watching the show. I, I'm just obsessed with them. So yeah, I mean, overall, I'm, I'm not having a terrible time. I'm enjoying it. I'm not obsessed with it by any means. I'm nervous about where it's gonna go from here because like I was saying I feel like a lot of people's problems are like in the second half and especially the last episode. I'm gonna have to record my reaction to the last episode because I've heard it's messy. <laughs> also Nikolai is a thing I feel like I should talk about because I was talking so much about how I wasn't sure how I felt about him at the beginning of the week before the show came out and I still kind of feel that way. I feel like there's very like extreme reactions to Nikolai's character from people watching the show so far. There are people who are not pleased with with this Nikolai and people who want him to be recast and then there's people saying that they're like they think he was the highlight of the season and his performance was great and I feel like I'm falling somewhere in the middle there's moments where I'm like oh yeah that that's Nikolai-esque sure and then there's moments where I'm like yeah that's someone that's pretending to be Nikolai I was trying to explain this to Darian I feel like it didn't make sense so hopefully I can do a better job now but like sometimes when you're watching especially characters that come from a book series that you've already read and you already know but sometimes when you're watching a show and you're watching these characters you forget they're acting you forget that that's not a real person that's someone pretending to be that person and it just feels so real like for example I feel like Amita Suman as Inej like she is Inej to me like she embodies the character so well she does such a good job that I'm like oh I'm just watching Inej on my tv not an actress playing Inej and I feel like with the Nikolai actor I think his name's Patrick Gibson right he sometimes I feel like I'm watching someone play Nikolai not necessarily watching Nikolai does that make sense? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not like as disappointed and as mad about it as I thought I was going to be, but I'm definitely not like loving it either. But I think he's better than I anticipated. I also feel like being upset about the casting for like the white guy with blonde hair versus like all of the other issues within the show, within the casting and just some of the other much more significant issues with that the show has. Like Nikolai's casting is literally the least of or should be the least of anyone's problems. So there's just so many other issues within the show and things that they've done that's like, you know, the white guy with blonde hair not looking like the correct white guy with blonde hair. It's just not it's not as important. So I'm not that mad, but I'm also not like 100% pleased with Nikolai, but we'll see. We'll see how it continues. Yeah, like I said, I'm I'm 21 minutes into episode five, so I think I'm gonna keep watching this, and I'm gonna try and finish the show today because I really just want to see what happens. I want to see what people are complaining about, <laughs> and I'm very curious as to where the Shadow and Bone and Six of Crows storylines are ending off this season because people keep talking about a Six of Crows spinoff, but how they don't think it's necessarily gonna work. I'm confused as how they're doing a Six of Crows spinoff if that does happen, but I don't know. We'll see. Right now, I'm enjoying it, but I'm also concerned. Like, I feel like I'm concerned to keep going, but I want to keep going. I just don't know how I'm gonna feel. So we're gonna keep watching. So far, it's not awful. I'm having a good time, but I'm still concerned. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it's literally the cutest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I literally went back and rewound just to watch that part again. The way you said hello to the butterfly, I can't. 
<laughs> He's just a baby. <laughs> They better not be doing what I think they're doing. I'm literally gonna cry. What? <laughs> Can someone explain to me who the girly is with the bangs? <laughs> the one working with the Darkling? I have no idea who this is supposed to be. Is she from the books? She do? Who is she? I don't understand. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> There's still an episode left. Something bad. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I was waiting for it. <sighs> okay, I have the final episode left to watch, and I it's it looks like it's an hour long, so we'll see how it goes. It's called No Funerals. <laughs> This is when I hear it gets pretty, pretty messy, so we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna go get more water and then we'll, we'll start watching even though I don't want to. <laughs> I already hate it. <laughs> Why did Kaz just get... Don't even, don't even... You need to go. <laughs> I'm so done with him. Love Ben Barnes, but... Oh! Have you seen David? Excuse me? I'm not gonna cry. Stay. Stay in Canada. Stay with me. I want you to. <laughs> I want you. <laughs> That's like a direct line from the book, isn't it? If there's another season and they get to King of Scars Rule of Wolves content, I might have to tap out. <laughs> For Zoya and Nikolai alone, they can get into King of Scars content. There's a new weapon about to hit the market. Every corner of the world could feel the effect. It's a drug. It's Georgia Perrin. Okay, so it's actually been a couple of days since I finished season two and I want to just kind of insert my thoughts on the season here so that I can keep all the shadow and bone stuff in one spot in this vlog so people can skip it if they want. And I'm going to try and keep my like overall thoughts and opinions on season two spoiler free. So if you haven't watched the season yet, do not worry. And overall, season two, I thought was fine. I don't know. <laughs> I think I went into season one expecting it to be kind of messy, just seeing what was going on before the show even came out. I was like, oh boy. 
this is going to be a mess. And then I was pleasantly surprised by season one and enjoyed it. And like I was saying at the beginning of this vlog, like rewatching season one, I forgot how much I enjoyed it. So I kind of went into season two with higher expectations. And that was, I think, mistake number one, because season two, I think, was the mess I was expecting season one to be. It was just kind of, it's just, I don't know, it was a little bit of a mess. <laughs> I don't think it was terrible. And like, the thing is, like, the show has like the Shadow and Bone story and those characters and the Six of Crows characters and everything with that. So the Shadow and Bone part of the show, I don't care about as much as the Six of Crows characters and story and everything. But I thought like, that was fine. I thought they did a pretty good job adapting those books but again I'm just not as invested and I don't care as much so I thought it was fine I thought it was enjoyable to watch but it wasn't what was super important to me but I do think they did a pretty good job of adapting those books and that story they did change the ending of like the Ruin and Rising ending is not exactly how they did it in the show like it's kind of different so I'm interested to see like if this show continues on what is going to happen because of those changes but yeah the Shadow and Bone stuff I thought was fine I think the highlight for me to be honest like every time we'd be with the Shadow and Bone characters I was excited to see Jenya and David I feel like they were the highlight of that storyline for me I think Daisy Head who plays Jenya was definitely one of the highlight performances of the season. I thought she was incredible. I just really loved seeing Jenya and David. I think they were definitely like the highlight, the I know metal scene. Unmatched. So good. <laughs> and because Nikolai is one of my favorite characters, I did enjoy his scenes. And I think the actor, his portrayal of Nikolai, like I enjoyed the more I got into the show and the more episodes I watched. But there just were some moments where I was like, you know, Nikolai is very charming. He has a lot of wit. He's very funny. And I feel like sometimes it was like a little cringe watching it. It just didn't, I don't know, translate the same. But I don't think it was awful and his performance kind of grew on me a little bit more as we got through the season, so it wasn't awful. It does, however, make me want to reread the original trilogy, which is something I never thought I'd want to do because I thought they were just fine. But for Nikolai content alone, I kind of want to reread them. <laughs> so yeah, the Shadow and Bone stuff I thought was fine. I thought was good even. I don't know. Fine, whatever. Six of Crows. That's what we're here for. That's what I care the most about. And I... I feel like that's where it gets a little messy. <laughs> I feel like just in general, this season felt a little messy to me. And I'd be interested to see if people who haven't read the books feel the same or how they feel about it. Because obviously I've read all of the books in the Grishaverse. So I have that in the back of my head when I'm watching the show. And watching it, I was like, they're literally adapting every book from the series. So season one was really focused on book one, Shadow and Bone. And then we got like a Six of Crows prequel. Season two literally took things from every other book in the series. And it was just kind of like, what are we doing? That's just a lot. I think it's just, it was too much. <laughs> and that was another thing that I didn't love about this season is because I don't love the like King of Scars duology. I don't know what that's actually called, but Rule of Wolves, I like, I do not like that book. There is one thing, like one couple that came out of that duology that I liked. And that's literally like the only thing I like about that duology. Rule of Wolves is just, I, I do not like that book. And they took things from that book and put them in the show and there's one thing specifically that they took and I'm angry about it. So that was another thing that I just I really did not like and I'm interested to see how them taking something from the last book in this kind of world and doing it now is going to affect the rest of the story. Like that's what I'm saying. Like I just feel like them taking so many different things from so many different books even though in the timeline with the characters we're not at that point. It just feels like how are you going to go forward doing that when you've taken things from ahead of where you are? It just feels a little messy. <laughs> and the Six of Crows characters and all of that is where I feel like it gets the most messy because I think they were trying to include scenes from the books, like fan favorite scenes and everything, some of the most iconic scenes and things like that. And I understand why they wanted to include them in case, you know, the show doesn't continue on if we don't end up getting the spinoff or whatever. But at the same time, it does affect how things are going to move forward. And I just, I don't know, I don't hate all of the changes they made. There were some changes that they made, some things they included from the books now that I, I really didn't mind. But I do think there were some changes made. There were things that they included. There were things they didn't include that I don't necessarily love. I don't love that they just completely ignored Inej and her like backstory and her like trauma and everything to do with her character that isn't to do with Kaz. Not that I don't love Kaz and Inej. I just feel like we should have gotten a little bit of a hint of her backstory. There were things that I'm like she should have reacted to this situation but she didn't at all and it's weird that there was no reaction and there was uh I think it was episode six and I don't want to say too too much but there was a moment where some of these characters were like hallucinating <laughs> and all of the other characters were thinking of like their trauma things that they're scared of things in their past 
things that they like information about themselves that they're kind of scared to confront and then we get a nej and she's thinking about Kaz and I'm like that could have been an opportunity for her character and her like backstory and everything to be explored a little bit more we didn't need to get super involved in it I'm sure if the spinoff happens maybe we'll get a little bit more into her backstory and everything but it's like why was there literally nothing this season I don't know don't love that so yeah I just think like the Six of Crows characters that plot the things they included the things that they didn't include the things they changed it didn't always work but I will say Freddie Carter's performance as Kaz I thought was much better this season I still think writing wise there were some things in both seasons where I was like would Kaz do that or say that but I think his performance as Kaz this season personally I thought was much better I like was actually believing that I was watching Kaz and also Jack Wolf as Wyland he is Wyland it is perfection that casting it's so so good he's just he's everything and the scenes with Wyland and Jasper were so great I know they're different from the book and I think I prefer like their scenes in the book but I don't hate the way that they did it in the show especially because every other like relationship that we see in the show is just so angsty and I feel like their relationship is a lot more fun and lighthearted. so it was like a nice break and a nice balance between all the other angsty characters and relationships so yeah there were things that I did like and I do think that there were some great scenes that they included like Kaz and Inej in episode 8 there's a scene that's like directly from the book that they did that I thought was really great so it wasn't like I hated everything that they decided to include or the changes that they made I just feel like every choice that they decided to make wasn't my favorite and I don't know I feel like I understand why the crows and like their story and those characters were included in the Shadow and Bone adaptation because you can't have I feel like a Six of Crows adaptation without there being a Shadow and Bone one. So I understand putting those characters in this adaptation to like establish them and their relationships so that they can get the spinoff. But I also think at the same time it's kind of doing a disservice to those characters and the books and the story itself because they have to change so much to get it to work. So I don't know. I don't hate it but I didn't love everything either and I did feel kind of messy and just like the way certain things were done it just felt like the people who wrote this season and where things were going it was like they were writing it as if they knew it was going to get cancelled <laughs> and like that's not a great way to approach a season obviously like there are things that they left open like they set up the Six of Crows spinoff 100% there were still some other things with like the Shadow and Bone characters that weren't completely wrapped up like they were starting to hint at like the King of Scars storyline and that duology and everything so I definitely feel like they didn't completely wrap up the show and everything it wasn't tied in a bow but there were certain things that they included and the way they did certain things I was like it kind of felt like they were just including it in case the show got canceled and I'm like I don't know if that really worked <laughs> so yeah overall thoughts wasn't terrible but wasn't great either definitely some interesting choices writing wise let's just hope that they get the Six of Crows spinoff because then maybe things will be fixed with those characters and it will be much better. So yeah, those are just kind of my like general thoughts. Obviously, if I could talk more about like specific things and spoilery things, we could get more into what I liked and what I didn't like, but I wanted to kind of keep this spoiler free in case you haven't watched the show yet. But if you have, I'd love to know your thoughts on season two. If you were happy with it, if you weren't happy with it, I would just love to know your thoughts. And if you are going to talk about spoilers in your comment from the show, definitely leave like a spoiler warning in your comment so people looking won't get spoiled for the show or for the books or anything but um yeah definitely let me know what you thought of Shadow and Bone season two down below I'm very curious to see what people are thinking <laughs> I'm not there why am I like acting like this <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna wrap up this vlog here, but I do have some final updates, some final things to chat about before we completely end the vlog. So first of all, Taylor Swift, Eras Tour, started this weekend. And I'm not gonna say anything too specific because I know there's people who are trying to avoid spoilers for the concert, which I think is so interesting. I've never seen people say that they're avoiding spoilers 
for a concert before. Like I know Taylor Swift, she puts on a performance. It's a show. It's not just her singing her silly little songs and strumming a silly little guitar. It's like there's so much to her show, so I understand it, but I've never heard people say that they're trying to avoid seeing things about the concert and like trying not to get spoiled, even like other Taylor Swift tours. So I respect it though. I'm going to not say anything too specific, but I'm very excited. I, I'm completely opposite. I'm like scrambling to find a live stream to watch of the opening night, which I did watch a whole live stream. I was up until 2 a.m. It's fine. <laughs> I'm very normal when it comes to Taylor Swift. <laughs> but the sets, the costumes, the set list, I'm so excited. There are some great songs on that set list. There's obviously some things I wish were on there, but like the fact that she's doing a tour where she's singing songs from all of her albums, of course there's going to be things that I specifically want her to sing from all of her albums, and it's just not possible. So I think she did a really good job of creating a set list, like combining everything. I do wish there were some changes, but I'm overall very happy. I think that was like an impossible task that she did very well creating a set list for so many albums. And I'm very excited. I'm going to sob when I see her. I'm literally seeing her in exactly two months from the day I'm filming this. So I'm so excited. <laughs> so yeah, just so happy. Taylor Swift is on tour. All of the videos and pictures and everything are just making me so, so happy. Also, Daisy Jones and the Six. I watched episode seven. Haven't watched episode eight yet, but episode seven was good. Knowing what comes next after the events of this episode, though, is where I'm a little concerned. <laughs> and I've heard episode eight was really good, so I'm excited to watch it. I didn't get to it this weekend. I was just kind of feeling like slumpy with everything this weekend. I just didn't really feel like doing anything, which does bring me to my next point, which I do feel like I am getting into a bit of a reading slump. I did manage to finish Crier's War, though, by Nina Varela, and I think the only reason I was able to finish this is because I had the audiobook for it and I was able to listen while physically reading along, but I ended up giving this four and a half stars, so my rating did lower a little bit. I kept it like a five star on Goodreads because you can't give half stars, but this time around I feel like the only characters that I felt really had any sort of depth to them were like the two main characters. I wish we had gotten more from the side characters, but I still think it's a very interesting plot, very interesting world. I do really like Cryer and Ayla as characters. I like the slow burn enemies to lovers romance that's happening, and I am really excited to finally get into the sequel and see where the story goes and how it wraps up. I just don't think it really necessarily hit me the same way it did the first time, but I still really enjoyed it. Obviously, four and a half stars is a good rating. I also think part of the reason I might not have enjoyed this as much this time around is because I am feeling slumpy, so I definitely think that that's like on me and that's just like a me personal problem. But yeah, I did enjoy my reread and I'm glad I did reread it because there was a lot that I forgot about. So I think going into the second book, it's going to be a little bit easier. I'm going to remember everything and I'm excited to hopefully pick that up soon. And with the Davenports, I got to 35% of the way through. I'm on chapter 17. I definitely didn't read a ton of this this weekend either. I just, I don't know. I'm not going to force myself to read if I don't feel like it. I know like that's why we're here to talk about books and all of that, but also at the same time it just makes it worse if I force myself to read when I don't feel like it. So I'm just allowing myself to not read if I don't feel like it. And I am enjoying that book though. Like I really like the characters. I like all of the romantic tension and relationships that are being set up. So I'm excited to keep going with it. I just definitely am feeling a bit slumpy. But yeah, I'm happy that I at least finished one of the books that I started this week and hopefully the Davenports I will be finishing it soon. And I will chat about my thoughts on that in my March wrap up. So you will hear my thoughts on it once I finish it. But yeah, I mainly just wanted to document this week because the Shadow and Bone TV show. So that was really my main motivation and I'm glad that I did. I'm glad that I was able to capture some reactions and my thoughts on camera. Again, definitely let me know your thoughts on season two down below if you've watched it, if you liked it, if you're disappointed, definitely let me know everything. But yeah, I think that that is going to be it for this vlog. Make sure you stick around though, because I'm going to be doing a lot of reading vlogs coming up. I do have some ideas for some planned vlogs, but I'm also going to be doing weekly vlogs all of April for the Magical Readathon, which is very exciting. So if you like reading vlogs, there will be a lot more coming your way soon. But I think that that is going to be it for this reading vlog. So thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.